My name is Alan Van Dines. I'm with the University of California, Davis, and I'm part of the uh, SoulCap project, which is, um, which is sponsored also by, by the USDA. So um, basically, th this whole workshop is sponsored by the USDA. Okay, so I have the first talk, and we have a series of about uh, uh, six talks today, and we're going to talk about what, try to use the data that we're currently uh, generating in SoulCap, and also with the tomato draft genome sequence. So how can we best use that um, as plant breeders and take advantage of the data and give you a quick update of where we are with that data. So I have the first talk and I'm going to talk about really sequencing technologies and um, part of it is for, you know, as breeders you don't have to think about sequencing technology so much, but I think it's important that you understand um, the differences between them because that really qualifies the type of data that comes out. And, and really that's what I want to try to um, relate today because not all sequences are the same, as you know. So how to sequence, so what are the new technologies that are coming out? Uh, you know, what part of the DNA you sequence is actually important? You want to sequence genes, you want to sequence random parts of the genome. Um, what line should I be sequencing? And that has actually quite, it's pretty relevant as far as how useful the information coming out uh, will be in, um, to your programs. And then how many lines, and so I used to say, the argument used to be what line should I sequence and a big argument and, and everybody had to have come up with a consensus but with technology today it's, it's how many lines and which lines and which populations do I need to sequence. Right? And so that really changes how you can think about things. So with sequencing, unfortunately we don't have a technology right now that can basically take a DNA molecule and sequence it from one end to the other. So we have to do, um, basically what we end up doing is we chop up the DNA and we try to put it back together. And that, and, and that has uh, some issues and different technologies handle that in different ways. So the, I'll call it the first generation te uh, technology which is a Sanger or dideoxy sequencing that the, say anything, say anything from five years ago and before has been done for the most part, um, including a big part of the tomato genome as used. Then there's second generation, or maybe called next generation sequencing, and I'm going to talk today about what we're calling third generation sequencing now. So Sanger, Sanger sequencing, basically, the DNA is actually cut with, with restriction enzymes. It's actually cloned into a vector, and with primers that are specific to that vector, um, we can start a sequencing reaction. And the dideoxy method, so it, which is a... Um, it's an NTP, so an ATP, A, G, C, or T that actually has um, an end on it that stops the sequencing reaction, is dideoxy. And where it ends is random. And because it ends at different places, you can get basically a sequence in, when you run that through a capillary gel. And so that, that's, and you get about 650 to 1,000 base pairs in a given run or read. So that's how the human genome was done. That's how rice was done, Rabidopsis kind of the first things that were sequenced. Uh, tomato was actually done with this, um, a combination of all these technolo the technologies I'm going to talk about. So what, something that's changed, so this was the first one I talked about is quite expensive and labor intensive and takes quite a while. Something that's changed, the next technology we came along is called 454 pyro sequencing and this takes advantage of basically the luciferase gene which is the gene that makes a firefly um, glow and they use that as the detection method um, in an enzymatic reaction. So instead of cutting with a restriction enzyme, they actually shear the DNA into single strands. And they'll put on adapters on the end of those DNAs, and that, those adapters are the primers that drive your sequencing reaction. The difference between this step and the, the last one, and really all the next sequencing technology we'll talk about, is there's no cloning step. And, and that changes, that, that, that puts, makes things a lot easier and allows you to basically sequence things in a highly parallel manner as opposed to one clone at a time. The sequence is amplified on these little little beads and you get uh, you call emulsion PCR and by adding uh, single nucleotides one at a time and looking at the light reaction coming off from adding a specific base at a, at a spot you can get a sequence from that. So this is highly parallel you have thousands and thousands of sequences uh, simultaneously, about hundreds of thousands. 
Another technology came out about the same time as a company called Selexa was bought out by Illumina. A slightly different technology called sequencing by synthesis. And what they do is they start with the same, the same method essentially. They shear the DNA into pieces and um, add some adapters. They go through a uh, PCR amplification and you get these loops which then are linearized. And so these little blue and, and purple uh, bits on here are really adapters where, or primers that the sequencing reaction starts on. And um, instead of looking at things one base at a time, they add all the bases at once, but each base has a different floor on it, so a different fluorescent tag on it. So based on the color of that tag, you can tell what base was added at each cycle. The more cycles you do, the longer your sequence now within a limitation, and I'll show you those limitations later. And so Illumina sequence, that's based, the last two are called next generation sequencing, and the, ne the next two or three that I'm going to talk about are stuff that really is just, just coming out. It's in beta phase, but it can change a lot of things that we're going to do. So this company called Helicos, they call it true single molecule sequencing. Um, the difference between it and Illumina is that it's very similar to Illumina, that they basically shear the DNA, have adapters, um, have uh, fluorescently labeled uh, nucleotides that they add, but there's no amplification step. So you get, and this is why they call it true single molecule sequencing. And so they can, again, at the same time, simultaneously, basically um, sequence about 50 million reads um, in, you know, at the time. So it's highly, highly parallel um, method. So this method is just starting to come out. The throughput, instead of Illumina, so Illumina, you get hundreds of thousands of reads in, in Iran. And, and so Helicos promises basically millions or billion reads. Um, in a run. And it's really digital base calling is what they claim. And then, so this is something that's in beta phase right now. Um, the machines are, are just starting to come out uh, to, for people to test them. And, and then a totally different type of uh, sequencing is called single molecule real-time sequencing. And this is from a company called Pacific Biosciences. And this is a very unique uh, way of sequencing in that the, um, they're, they're using the natural DNA polymerase to sequence. And the way they, they can use this and to, is that they have these little wells that the DNA can, that comes in. They use the DNA polymerase that actually um, sequences at what's called enzymatic speed. So these other sequ the next generation sequencing takes days to do a run or weeks sometimes to do a run. The idea here that they're doing this in minutes at the same time or hours. So they can do about four hours what Illumina can do in, in about a week or two and things like that. And the difference is they've added the floor not to the nucleotide but actually to the phosphate base, which is less intrusive and makes it a smaller molecule and allows the polymerase to go through um, much more efficiently. So they can sequence 10 base pairs per second. And then, so this is the idea, and you can resequence with, with smart technology, same idea, fragment the DNA, add some adapters, and then you basically make these little loops that fall into these wells, and then they can resequence several rounds if, if you want to. Ion torrent kind of takes the best of both technologies, I promise to. This, this is one of these things like PCR that almost hits you in the head and say, geez, it's so simple. It's got to work. First of all, the size of the machine, the idea behind Iron Torrent is that you can get your personal sequence to put on your lab bench. You don't have to spend $300,000 or half a million dollars in a genome center uh, to run it. And their goal is just that. So they have, they're using the same idea as the previous, um, the previous slide as the Pacific Biosciences in that they're not using um, invasive fluorescent molecules, but they recognize that when you add a base to a sequence, there's an, H, there's an H ion that's released. That's what the computer business is based on. So basically their, their whole basis is a computer chip. Now, so this little computer chip, like an Intel chip, is what the sequencing is, go is going on. They're looking for the release of H ions. So, every, so they flood the system with a T, 
they read the H ion to come off in different wells. They flutter with a G, they read out what, which comes out, and so on like that. So it's really digital sequencing, and they're taking advantage basically of the microprocessor chip industry, and, and um, basically Moore's law and all the innovations have come up with microchips. And again, so this is kind of in beta phase, um, but but it has a, some nice promise um, in the resequencing arena. So I put together a summary slide of the different technologies, and the things that are important are the throughput, the length of the reads, and I'll show you why that's important, and, and of course the cost. So I made some cal rough calculations and with cost per megabase, so per um, a million base pairs. Uh, the tomato genome is, is basically is a is one gigabase, uh, well, so it's a thousand megabases, and that just to give you an idea. So about four thousand dollars per megabase um, for Sanger, the old the old way. And if you look down at these other technologies with Illumina, you're in about this ten cent range. Four five four is about what four five four is quite a bit more expensive, and that's really due to the throughput. Um, calculation over here. So if you look at the megabases per run, um, it changes you know, quite a bit. The Helicos, um, the Helicos is probably five times better than the Illumina for megabases per run. So I'm not sure if the cost, like these machines aren't down yet, so we're not sure about the cost. But what's different also though is the length of these reads. And that, and that has huge implications on, on assembly and, and how to put these things back together. So these last generation technologies, I'm trying to get this here, the helicos and the ion torrent, right now they're at the 25 base pairs. That has some fairly large limitations. And it's only useful really to, to do resequencing type projects. You're not going to put, a, you're not going to assemble little bits of DNA that look like that into a whole gene, for example, to cover a whole gene, unless you have a background, a base, like a draft genome of tomato, for example, uh, to put that against. And that's so. So these have different applications, and I'll go through that a little quickly. 